Well, for one, I let the instrumentalists and vocalists know that we're all in this together. There's no such thing as big eyes and little U's, and there's no I in the word team, so we all work together. Um, I make sure to encourage the singers that they are musicians also. There's a, lot, a lot of times you will hear, oh, musicians and singers. No, you have instrumentalists and vocalists. So we, we create a, a bond that we're all musicians and we're all working together. And so I include the band in the warm-ups and I include the vocalist in communicating with the instrumentalist on different parts of the form and we'll go from there. foremost I, I, I try to encourage them to really think about um, individualized itemized practicing and focused practicing rather than just running in a practice room and blowing your brains out or banging your brains out whatever the case may be it's actually more about quality than quantity it's the quality of practice time that you put in it's the uh, the intent I mean uh, if you're going to pick up your instrument or sit down at your instrument Always approach it with intent, with an objective in mind. Listen as much as you possibly can. Not just hear the music, but listen to the music.
This particular time this year, I had chosen the music beforehand. I got with uh, Chantel Hampton, who was the vocal coach in the class, and uh, I had an idea of a song that I, songs that I wanted to do. Um, there were three songs that I wanted to work on with this group. Uh, because I knew I was going to have horns, I didn't know which horns I was going to have. I knew I was going to have a rhythm, se rhythm section and horns because I always have standard rhythm section, but not all the time horns. But uh, I knew I was going to have horns, so I told her that we wanted to do um, the new song that's on the newest Michael Jackson album, Love Never Felt So Good, but I wanted to do the version with Michael Jackson and Justin Timberlake. Um, and then I wanted to do Save the Night by John Legend and uh, Take Back the Night by Justin Timberlake. However, we had thought about doing uh, a different song other than Save the Night at first. And then I had the idea to do Save the Night. And Chantel agreed, so yeah, let's do Save the Night. And we're basically gonna go from one song to the next. So in order for me to really work it within the time frame that I have, within these actually four weeks, because the fifth week is when we perform, I basically programmed everything ahead of time. And then, you know, the skeleton of the charts. When we get to rehearsal, the students may have some ideas about, oh, let's put this in, let's put that in, and then I'll actually go back and rearrange according to what we're gonna do. But I had a vision of what I wanted um, going in, so it would, so I wouldn't seem unorganized or flustered when I got to the classroom. Because there's nothing worse than when students come and are excited about studying with you and you seem to be unprepared. So that needs to be something that's prepared. Um, since then, I've actually, you know, worked on some other stuff uh, for the class, but I had an outline of what I wanted to do, at least. So the first day they came in playing. difficult part is actually getting them to focus and not only getting them to focus but getting them to go in in other words just totally going into the music totally getting into it and to not be swayed by their own personal view of the music or or whatever but to actually kind of get into them into the music and uh, one way to do that is is to really try to get them to be engaged and get them to like each other and get them to like the class and get them to like being there. Because if you don't do that by the first or second day, it's, it's a little bit difficult to impart any kind of information into them. So but you got to open up their minds and their hearts and their spirits before you start um, imparting any information. And then once you get them, then it's, uh, you know, then you're in, in good shape.
I always start with one song I bring in. And then I say, okay, what are we going to do? Now, we sit with YouTube and people suggest this, 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 and you, all, you always have somebody like loves a song, and somebody suggests a song, and somebody else in the band goes, oh, no, we can't do that, no. You know, it's, it's just like on and on and on with the, with, these high, with the high school group, with the city music people, you know, because they're very opinionated. They're really like, oh, this is the good music. I remember being that way. This is the good music. This is the bad music. So somebody likes this particular kind of style, and this dr drummer doesn't, it's just, you know, so to try to come up with the material that everybody will do and everybody will get behind is the challenge. And it takes a lot of listening. This song, this song, this song, you know, um, we did a lot of it, uh, the, uh, well, yesterday, right? And, uh, um, you know, we spent a lot of time at the end of class listening to tunes. And, you know, I don't think we... <laughs> We came up with a few that I think are kind of workable, but, but it, you know, it's, it's difficult. But the problem is, you know, I got to get, I, I want the students to buy in. That's the point. If you get them to buy in, they're going to practice, they're going to spend the time at home, right? They're going to do the work. You know, if you bring in some songs that you say, okay, this is the material that you have to play because this is the good stuff, and they don't buy in, then they come back and they haven't practiced and nothing's happened. My take is you can play a song with one chord really, really well, or you can play a song with 25 chords really, really well, and vice versa. You know, it's all about buying in and putting in the time.